Welcome to another 21 Hats Dashboard. I'm Lauren Feldman, and I'm here with John Ahrensmeyer, who is founder and CEO of Small Business Majority, an advocacy group for businesses and entrepreneurs. Happy Monday, John, and welcome back. Happy Monday, Lauren. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Um, John, as, as you may have heard, there's a presidential election coming up in just about two weeks. Really? Uh, yeah. Voting has already begun. Um, so w- when you join me on these podcasts, we, we always talk about policy issues, but I thought it would be good uh, this time to kind of review the most important issues for business owners in this election. Uh, what do you think those are? What are the most important issues in the election for business owners? Well, thanks, Lauren. I mean, we're, we're really um, pleased that Vice President Harris has actually made small business um, a centerpiece of her, of her messaging and, and her plan. Um, in fact, uh, we were pleasantly shocked to hear her mention small business in her very first answer in the debate against Donald Trump. So um, this is something we're not used to hearing from candidates on either side of the aisle. And, um, you know, she has a she has a pretty robust plan um, to support small businesses, uh, expanding a small business expansion fund uh, with zero percent interest, um, expanding the SSBCI program, uh, creating a network of business incubators. Remind us what that is, SSBCI. Oh, I'm sorry. SSBCI is a state small business credit initiative, um, which is originally an Obama era uh, program coming out of the Great Recession to provide um, uh, first loss uh, support to um, uh, capital being provided to the most, the smallest and most under-resourced businesses. And it was then revived again in the American Rescue Plan uh, and is, is underway now uh, and basically providing support for uh, to states, directly to the states, and they can implement this any way they want to, um, to provide um, uh, support for capital, for debt and um, equity capital to small businesses with a real focus on, on the smallest, most, most underserved businesses. And she's talked about expanding that even further. Uh, it, the, the benefit during the Obama program was a 10 to 1 um, leverage uh, to public to private capital. And uh, the hope is that's going to continue here. Um, you know, she's talked about uh, expanding network of business incubators, um, cutting red tape, something you don't hear um, Democratic candidates talk about um, all the time. Uh, expanding, this is a biggie, um, expanding uh, small business government contracts from the current target of 23% to as much as 33%, expanding the rural partners network. So she's got um, uh, more than uh, presidential candidates we've seen in the past. She's got a pretty robust plan. And, um, you know, on the other hand, um, you know, we're not seeing anything uh, coming out of former President Trump's um, there's very little discussion specifically about small business. In fact, we did a word search on his um, his uh, proposals, um, his, his major policy proposals, and what the word small business didn't come up once. So we're sort of having to divine uh, what this all means. He's talked a lot about increasing tariffs, which are going to have a, a negative effect on most small businesses. Talked about you know mass de- deportations, which is something that um, is really going to hurt small businesses in need of workforce. So. I'll stop there, but basically, um, we're looking at a, a you know a, quite a difference between the two candidates' focus on the sorts of, of, of key issues that, that we really care about. I noticed when you went through uh, Kamala Harris's plan, you, you didn't mention the item that I think has gotten the most attention, although I think it's a little confusing, and that's the uh, fifty thousand uh, dollar tax credit that is sometimes referred to as a small business tax credit. I'm not sure that's really accurate. Why didn't you mention that? Um, well, you're right. It is kind of a centerpiece of her proposal. Um, look, we think it's helpful, um, and it's certainly helpful for newer businesses where um, a lot of the uh, new jobs are created. It's probably not at the top of our list of of, of things you know in our policy agenda, but it's certainly helpful, and um, it's helpful for for businesses who are likely to to grow faster. And so, um, you know, again, it's just one of a number of, of, of uh, provisions that she's got in her plan. But it is a tax credit aimed at new businesses, not existing businesses. And even for new businesses, they don't actually get the benefit of it until they're profitable, which could be several years down the road. Is that correct? Yes. I, I would say it's one of many um, arrows in, in this arsenal that she's, she's put out. Um, it's not... I know it's getting a lot of attention. It's um, it's not necessarily 
um, you know, the most important thing that we can do for small business, but it, it, is, it is very targeted. And look, we've had um, 19 million new business registrations in the last three and a half years. So we are seeing a lot of new businesses form. Uh, not all of them are going to be able to take advantage of a $50,000 um, uh, startup expense um, uh, deduction, but um, some of them are, and some are going to grow faster than others and are going to create jobs. Let's talk about taxes a little bit. I, I think it's fair to say that most business owners believe that they will pay less in taxes under a President Trump than under a President Harris. Do you think that's right? I don't think it's right. And, and the reason is, if you look at the current tax structure, um, it, it, it definitely favors, um, obviously, wealthier people and big businesses, but also within the small business world, it really favors, though, small businesses with the highest revenues. They, the thing that people most focus on is the 199A small business tax deduction. And the way that's structured, giving an automatic 20% deduction for all profits, is that almost 70% of the benefit of that is going to the top 4% of pass-through entities. So you've got kind of a signature piece of the tax um, tax policies out there, but it's not benefiting the smallest businesses. And look, we're for uh, we're not for getting rid of it. We're for reforming it and creating something that's more bottom up, something like a twenty-five thousand dollars standard deduction that everybody can take. And for business, for the smallest businesses, um, they're going to benefit way more than they're benefiting from the current um, system. So again, I think there's this confusion about what you know the fact that there is a quote unquote small business deduction out there, but the fact the way it's implemented really isn't is not benefiting the smallest businesses. That's not something I hear a lot from business owners. It, it may be just that they're happy to have <laughs> any deduction at all, and 20% off the top sounds uh, pretty good. Is this something that you sense uh, y your constituency cares about? Yeah, I mean, we've done some polling recently, and by more than two to one margin, small businesses support uh, a, a bottom-up solution to this um, versus, versus leaving it the way it is. Uh, this is, it, we, we raised this issue back in 2017 when they were considering the TCJA, and we made the point that what they had on the table was not going to benefit the smallest businesses, and they really should look at something that was more bottom-up. Um, I think you're right, Lauren. I think people hear the word small business deduction, and they think, wow, that's good for small business, but you have to do the math. And when you combine the uh, level of deduction with the rate, you end up getting this skewed benefit of almost 70% of the benefit going to the top 4%. So uh, there's, for, there's, there's something in there, a little bit in there now for every, any business that has a profit, a pass-through profit, uh, but it's um, really skewed and uh, we would love to see it reformed and fixed. Got it. You, you mentioned tariffs before as, as part of uh, what Donald Trump is talking about. And you, you, you said that it, clearly would not be to the advantage of most small businesses. I think the, the expressed intention there is to bring manufacturing back to this country. Do you think it would have any helpful impact in that? Well, I think that the problem is that as it relates to manufacturing is that it's going to increase the cost of um, a lot of raw materials that manufacturers use. So um, it may benefit larger industries uh, that are, um, you know, the auto industry, et cetera, but it's going to um, kind of ripple across the entire economy, impacting prices for, for goods, uh, for supplies that, that um, small, smaller businesses need to, to survive. So um, I, I see nothing from most economists other than this is going to actually have a, a recessionary impact on the economy and certainly is not going to benefit the vast majority of small businesses who, who need supplies who are going to end up paying more for many of them. There's been a lot of talk about the Biden administration bringing back manufacturing jobs with the Infrastructure Bill, the CHIP Act, the, um, the poorly named Inflation Reduction Act. Um, but my understanding is that manufacturing output has yet to really show any impact as a result of that. Is, is that f a fair statement? Well, I think there's a time lag. I think that uh, you know, these, these programs are starting to be implemented. I think we are seeing an increase in manufacturing um, around the country. I think we're seeing an increase in green technologies, uh, infusing manufacturing. And I think it's, you know, we, we got to wait and see uh, exactly what the impact is going to be long term. Uh, these are not uh, policies that produce instantaneous results. 
but it is uh, an effort to to improve our ability to, to manufacture goods in this country, and that's going to have a benefit to to small businesses. And 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 it's looking at it from the investment standpoint as opposed to the sort of tariff increase cost standpoint that, that Trump's looking at it. Regulation is another area where I think it's fair to say business owners tend to believe that they are likely to fare better with a Republican administration than a Democratic administration. You referred to some suggestion that the Harris campaign is eager to cut red tape. You're in Washington. You are plugged in. Do you have a sense of what that refers to or is that to be determined? Well, I think realistically, she's talking, I mean, most red tape that small businesses, as you know, uh, deal with is at the state and local level. And she is talking about uh, sort of um, bringing together um, states to talk about how they can have consistent policies. Um, the um, and, and to the extent there is federal red tape, she's talking about cutting that. So, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, again, you know, when it comes to regulation, it's not, it's not an all or nothing thing. You have to look at specific regulation. Is there a benefit? Is there a need for it? The other thing I think small business is looking for is consistency. And this is one of the problems with the decision by the Supreme Court to weaken the so-called Chevron Chevron deference, because um, when it comes to federal regulations, small businesses understand there needs to be some regulation in the economy. They are looking for consistency. They're looking for something they can plan around. And by rem- by removing the ability of agencies to have sort of a consistent set of regulations, um, it creates a lot of uncertainty. Now, that isn't specifically what she's talking about in her plan, but I'm sort of addressing the issue of, of regulation um, overall. But yeah, look, there are there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of red tape. She's also talked about licensing um, uh, uh, rules for for um, op- occupational licensing, which is a real problem. Um, a lot of states have rules that are onerous that force small business, uh, potential small businesses to um, have to spend a lot of money on education. Um, they tend to protect the sort of businesses that are in the in this space right now and keep out new entrants. So this is this is the sort of thing she's talking about. Um, and uh, yeah, look, at some level, the federal government can only do so much. But again, I get back to my original point, she's at least shining a light on some very practical issues faced by small business. And this is something we haven't really seen in um, candidates running for national office, and it's something we welcome. You know, I, w- I wonder sometimes w- w- we... <sighs> In the business media, tend to to have this conversation sort of issue by issue, as as you and I have just done. Um, and I wonder sometimes if it's if it's not just more important to business owners how the overall economy performs. Um, you know, if you w- win on certain issues but the economy tanks, I'm not sure you come out ahead. H- how do you think about that? I, I think it's both. I think, you, yes, of the, the overall economy, at the end of the day, that's going to drive a lot of, of what happens to small business. Um, but then there are specific policies that we've been talking about here that impact small business. I don't think it's one versus the other. Obviously, you have to have a strong economy, which which we basically have now. I mean, it's not, yes, we're still digging out from uh, pandemic-driven inflation, uh, but that's the rate has now come down. Um, the um, the um, employment is strong, um, and we uh, you know that's going to you know if that continues or as the inflation begins to subside, that is going to benefit um, all aspects of the economy, including small business. So I don't think it's an either or uh, question. I think you need obviously both. It's been such a tricky period to assess where the economy is. And, you know, for the last couple of years, I've had the sense that the if you look at the usual metrics, you know, employment, GDP, the economy seems to be performing uh, pretty well, especially compared to other w- wealthy countries. Um, and yet I. I don't always get that sense talking to business owners. What, what, what do you hear from um, you know small business majority folks? Do do you have a sense that they are feeling it's a strong economy? I think they continue to be cautiously optimistic. Look, there were a ton of shocks um, during COVID, and inflation was one of them. And we haven't fully recovered from the impact of some of the price inflation. Um, 
uh, recent years. So it's going to take time. I, I think people are surprised, pleasantly surprised that um, you know, we had a soft landing uh, and, and then things right now look as if they're heading in the right direction. So, uh, yeah, I think that, um, yes, I think businesses, and, and we're seeing this incredible upsurge in business formation that I just talked about. So I think overall it's positive. Um, there are still uh, major issues of prices. Look, she's, she, um, Vice President Harris has addressed this issue of price gouging, and sure, a lot of that's consumer-related. But in fact, uh, we have huge problems with price uh, discrimination um, for small businesses, where large businesses are getting much better uh, rates due to uh, price discounts, and that's creating an, an unlevel playing field out there. Now, this is something that's existed. Uh, this isn't a function of, of the last couple of years. And she's actually looking to address that, and particularly in an era where we've seen um, inflation um, that uh, in like previous years, um, that's again an area where she's looking to, to focus on that. So it's it's basically, I think, a relatively stronger economy than most people expected, and uh, we need to keep moving it that way. We need to minimize the, um, you know, we need to keep leveling the playing field, whether that's tax policy or. Uh, fair competition policy. Got it. I, I probably should have pointed this out earlier, but y- you as an organization, Small Business Majority, y- you don't uh, endorse candidates. No. Am I right about that? We don't endorse. Got it. Is there anything else we should cover, John? It's hard to believe that this is only two weeks away now, basically. No, I, I think, look, I think she's also talked about um, the uh, healthcare is, is critical in a couple areas there, continuing the premium tax credits um, that were um, continued um, as part of the Inflation Reduction Act. They expire at the end of 2025. We've seen an incredible increase in use of the um, market, healthcare marketplaces. Over half of the participants in the healthcare marketplaces are small business owners, employees, and self-employed people. So continuing those after 2025 is going to be critical, something that she's talked about. She's talked about uh, medical debt. Uh, That's obviously uh, a big issue for small business owners trying to get um, loans, taking that kind of out of the mix of what can be considered in, in, um, in, uh, in loan applications. So, um, and drug pricing uh, continues to be an issue. The, there were steps taken in the Inflation Reduction Act to um, allow Medicare to negotiate for certain prices, and um, that that needs that needs to continue. The effort to bring drug prices down. So, healthcare continues to be a huge issue. Childcare is a huge issue out there. She hasn't said a lot about it. At least she has acknowledged it as a as a small business issue. Um, but uh, we're we're seeing an incredible. Um, problem within the small business community for employers and for their employees uh, who don't have access to affordable child care and the fact that most of the child care providers are themselves small businesses. So, um, you know, there are definitely other issues out there that uh, uh, we need to talk about moving forward. Um, and, uh, you know, you've touched on the others, the taxes. Um, so, um, I think I've touched a little bit on immigration. I think we need to get our arms around the whole immigration um, problem we have. We're obviously a, a comprehensive solution is going to be essential. Small businesses rely on on immigrant employees uh, to grow, and uh, we've seen um, you know it's gotten a little better now, but we've seen a real shortage in in, in work uh, available workers, and um, we need to we need to have a, a sane immigration system to in order to. Um, continue our economic growth, particularly for small businesses. As you obviously know, there, there was agreement on a plan uh, for immigration between Democrats and Republicans in the Senate. Uh, it got tanked uh, after <laughs> it seemed to be um, a, a done deal. Would that deal, if it came back to life, make sense to you? Yes, absolutely. It was a, it was a big step in the right direction. We think there needs to be a fully blown comprehensive immigration plan like the one passed by the Senate almost 10 years ago that then got stalled in the House. But um, short of that, certainly what was in that uh, plan uh, would have at least brought some more sanity and clarity to the immigration situation. And uh, yes, it was too bad that that got derailed uh, for seemingly partisan political reasons. 
And I, and I should add that uh, what the former President Trump's proposing in terms of um, the mass deportations is not going to it's, it's going to be extremely harmful to our economy and particularly to the small business economy. Are there any uh, state or local issues that you're particularly paying attention to? Well, we've talked a little bit about the red tape issue, which does play out even more on the state and local level. Um, you know, we haven't talked about uh, paid family leave, which is more and more states are now enacting their own programs to support paid family leave, something that we found in all of our polling um, the small businesses um, support. We even have another uh, poll coming out soon that's going to be um, highlighting that. Uh, and the action is at the state level. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's stalled at the federal level. And look, we're going to be, one way or the other, we're going to be looking at divided government. Uh, regardless of what happens in the presidential race, we know we're going to have a very tight margin um, in the both the Senate and the House, uh, regardless of which way each goes. It's, it's, and, and so we're, we're going to have trouble getting things done at the federal level. Uh, and uh, this is where the states come in. And they're, they're spending more time looking at some of these issues around paid family leave and health care uh, and child care. And, um, and uh, even in, in sort of the antitrust and fair competition arena. So, yeah, I mean, I, th I think we've seen state a, a lot of innovative policies that can emanate from the states. Uh, we haven't talked about responsible lending, about uh, full disclosure for around small business lending to match what exists for consumer loans. Um, that is, again, not happening at the federal level. So we've seen states step in to, uh, to take that on. So, yeah, state, work in the states is going to be absolutely essential, particularly given what is likely to be a uh, divided government at the federal level. John Ahrensmeyer is founder and CEO of Small Business Majority. John, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me, Lauren. Have a great week, everybody.